Hi, welcome to our discussion today. We recently finished a 10-part series at First Assembly of God of Shippensburg called Spiritual Things in Church, and we were focusing primarily on 1 Corinthians 12, 13, and 14, the manifestation of spiritual gifts and their proper use within the church. And uh, this week's five-minute message is entitled, Behave Yourself. Well, maybe you've heard that as a kid growing up in church. Now, behave yourself. You're in church, you know, as if uh, you didn't have to behave yourself out of church. And sometimes we can, we can, as adults, hear that behave yourself and think that means, oh, I have to be totally unmoved uh, when I'm in a church service. Kind of like that old gospel song, I shall not be, I shall not be moved. Well, that isn't what the song meant, but some people say, I dare the Holy Spirit to move me. That's not what we want to uh, be like, and that's not at all what I mean when I say behave yourself. But there are uh, problems in some cases when we get together to worship. There are excesses. There are things that are not wrong in and of themselves. But when we focus on one thing to the exclusion of another, we're not uh, really experiencing all that God has for us. In the case of 1 Corinthians 14, Paul is responding to a letter he had received with some questions and concerns, and he's talking specifically about tongues and prophecy. And he says, prophecy is superior to tongues unless the tongues are interpreted. It seems like the church in Corinth had a little obsession with tongues, and really, it's such a supernatural thing that we can understand how young Christians would just think, this is incredible. Uh, I'm able to speak in this language that I've never learned. And certainly tongues has its proper place in the life of a Christian and in public worship. But uh, Paul does not say to forbid tongues. As a matter of fact, he says exactly the opposite. He said, don't forbid tongues, but also pray that you would prophesy. Because in a public setting, it's more important that all the believers are edified. Paul makes a statement in verse 15 of chapter 14 when he says, So what shall I do? I will pray with my spirit, but I will also pray with my understanding. I will sing with my spirit, but I will also sing with my understanding. So it's not an either-or proposition, but whatever we do, we have to do things decently and in order. The Bible does speak about order in worship. Uh, the church today is more concerned with order of worship, they're not the same thing. And we have camps within the churches that will, will decide that, well, one thing is proper and one thing is not. But if the Bible speaks of all of it, well, then why not include all of it? When you yank a verse out of context, you run the risk of not only improper doctrine, but also of removing something from the picture that God intends to paint in the church. There is no evidence, biblically or otherwise, that these manifestation gifts have ceased. Now I know, and I have some friends in cessationist camps that believe they have. It does not make them evil, it does not make them bad people, and we disagree on these things. But I do not see any biblical evidence that these have ceased, and I've seen plenty of evidence in my own life and in my own experience that they have anything but ceased because I have been uh, witness to them uh, in others and in myself. So we, we've got to be careful about the statements that we make about one another, especially in things like this. We can't run from the Holy Spirit and call it maturity. Well, I guess we can, but not in God's eyes. Let's not run away from things that we don't understand but let's also not major on things that are only a part of the equation. God wants us all. He wants our whole being, our body, our, our mind, our, our soul, our spirit. And when we are engaged in a holistic way, I guess we could say, spiritually speaking, well then we find out that God chooses to use us in ways and, and open us to experiences that perhaps we've only read about on paper. Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forever. That's what the, the Word of God says. And if He is the same yesterday, today, and forever, well, then that means God and the Holy Spirit are also the same yesterday, today, and forever. So behave yourselves. 
<laughs> Behave yourselves. Operate decently and in order. Give respect to others in public worship. Behave yourself when you're witnessing to the world, huh? Can we do that? Can we behave ourselves? Can we go in an attitude of love? Uh, can we have uh, honest disagreements with fellow believers without accusing the other of heresy? Oh, I think we can. This is uh, this church that Jesus Christ is a whole lot bigger than a lot of people will say. Now, I certainly think that in our world today, there are many people who would like to include all religions as all valid pathways to God. And I certainly do not believe that. I think the Bible is clear that Jesus is the only way. Why was Jesus the only way? Because he's the only one that had the credentials uh, that, were, that were needed to pay the price of sin. If you can point me to one other person that ever walked the face of the earth that carried those credentials, then we can talk. But there was no one else. Jesus is fully God, fully man, lived a sinless life, and yet he paid the price of sin. And he was the only one who had the credentials and the currency necessary to pay that price. So when we come together in worship, let's behave ourselves. Let's behave ourselves the way that we act, the way that we talk to one another, and the way that we engage in worship. God bless you. Thanks for uh, joining me today, and we'll see you next week. Mm -hmm.